Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start our next build. It's going to be a 1176 compressor. A clone from the classic Eure model. This is the, going to be the Euraf uh, version of the compressor. So some small changes made and uh, this is the, the revision G I believe. So um, uh, no, no big deal with the uh, the boards uh, from Pusherman, like the the Calor Pro projects. Um, I am initially I'm not going to use the input transformer. There is an option for an input transformer as well. Uh, the original does not have that. Uh, it is electronically balanced, not not balanced by a transformer. So, but uh, Jakob put it there because he liked the sound. Uh, to be honest, I'm gonna just do it to have some some savings on the money, and also this is this is for with Landal transformers, and I um, have some experience with them, and I hear that they do not color the sound that much, so I'm gonna be happy with the output transformer. Uh, that's also a a Lundal transformer, which which leads us directly into one of the um, the things uh, we always talk talk about and always comes up with with the DIY projects parts so the transformer um, even for me who lives in Sweden where these are built I'm having some sort of problem with with finding these at a reasonable price I can get them directly from Lundahl it's ridiculously expensive I can get them cheaper from one place in Germany so they are on that that thing is on order right now uh, but it's very very expensive if you compare it to the like the OEPs, um, almost as much as a Carnhill, which is a super high end um, transformer. So um, uh, as I said, the, the the board is from Pushman, or I should should say boards, because we have two of these little uh, boards that that are for um, uh, for rotor switches your standard rotor switchers. Uh, so the original unit of course has the, the classic push buttons but um, that's going to be sort of like a hassle in in a couple of ways for DIY. Partly because if you make your own faceplate you have to cut out squares and that's the, the worst thing to to have to do because you, you never get the corners sharp and it just looks like crap if you don't have any if you just try to do it out in your tools and like I do all my stuff so um, and also you have to have the the latching switches has to release as you push down the other there are uh, options from China to do this but it's functionally it's it's actually exactly the same thing the only thing you would miss out on is a uh, the, the ability for the classic all in mode where you push on all for uh, Gain reduction buttons on the 1176, but uh, this is solved with with the slam mode. So I'm gonna mount that just with a switch. So it's gonna it's gonna bypass the switches and just push all the buttons in with this instead. Uh, it's just like a simple uh, schema schematic mode anyway. So when you do that, so um, uh, so that's uh, that's why we use this, which which we can find anywhere. It's, and it's really simple just to drill a hole in a in a faceplate. So luckily this time. I won't have to drill a hole in the faceplate face because I have this uh, this here faceplate from Pushman as well. Um, this looked really good. I had I don't know why why the, the 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 power printing is kind of shoddy though, but other other than that, it's no no problem. So this would normally accommodate a switch. Um, I don't really have to use that I, I so I'm gonna put down a nice little light there instead um, what else yeah as you can see a slam mode that's what they call the or it's nuke mode I think they call it also so it's a cool name for just putting all the buttons in so um, so the ratio is gonna be on a big knob like this instead and uh, the bypass and the uh, and a meter select gonna be here, no problems. Um, so that's for one part. The next part that was a hassle for me for some for some reason was to find a uh, uh, 
4.7 meg uh, linear pot for the release. Uh, it's pretty high value and the, uh, the only thing I could find. I usually I like these alpha pots because they are small and I'm, I'm used to them from from building pedals. We, we use these all the times. But um, I had to go with this Omeg and they have the long shaft which I, I actually hate because I have to cut them off. It didn't feel good at all just turning them uh, compared to the alphas. And also another thing is that the holes in this plate is too small for the Omegs. The, they have a larger diameter than the alphas that are just as wide as the pot itself if you, if you see it here. The, you can see that the threading is just as wide as the hole for the shafts. So that's a good thing. This one, you can see that the, the threading here is plastic and it's also much wider than the shaft. So this is just for the shaft. This won't go in. So I have to mold this plate. So I have to do some drilling anyways. So kind of annoying. Um, I have yet to decide if I'm going to use this IEC connector because it might be that I want to have a switch on the back side just like I did with the Calvac, just a simple switching thing on the back side. So I haven't decided on that part yet. Um, the next difficult parts I've had to chase down that I don't actually have solved yet is ridiculous enough a couple of simple resistors. So you have a, a 7.68k resistor. Um, it's kind of a weird number. Um, you have a 38.3k resistor, also a bit off kilter and a bit weird. And you have a 44.2k resistor. So um, usually I would just say like, oh, I, I can get pretty close, and uh, everything here is is five percent. Uh, it's 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 accounted with five percent uh, variance on the on the. Uh, on the um, resistors anyways. So usually what I do, I, I would just get a cl uh, as, as close as I could and be sure to be in like 3% off. Then then I would even be in the, within the range of a, the uh, what the resistor is uh, expected to give. But all of these resistors are in the same spot on the schematic. So it's in the, in the gain reduction control lamp and gain reduction, that's, that's what's this unit does. So I am now a bit hesitant to do any replacements. They're all around the same spot as well on the on, my, on some of the uh, transistor pair. So I'm, I'm sort of hesitant and I really don't know what to do yet. I think I can source them the proper resistors but it's going to be dirt. It's, it's really expensive. Um, and I found the proper uh, because uh, uh, I found the the actual uh, the correct resistors. They only sent like in a packs of two two thousand, and I'm never going to use those ever again. And the other uh, model is to have really really precise ones that sell in a pack of five, but those are super expensive. So I haven't sold that yet. Uh, it might be if I um, if I turn really desperate and I only have one left that I try to um, uh, try to serious uh, serious serious connect. Uh, two resistors and sort of get to the value that I'm looking for. But that was a surprise for me because I never had any problems sourcing resistors. That is kind of stupid. Um, so um, that's one part that's a bit hard to get. Um, there are some transistors here that were, was kind of a hassle as well. Um, they, that I really couldn't just pick up at, at any place. Um, but I had to order specially from Bansai. They are super slow and uh, yeah, they, they carry a lot of stuff, but they are super slow and it's annoying to wait for everything. Uh, the BC107s I had already, so that's going to be a load of those in there. Um, I, the the LM, um, LM7824 is just a, a um, uh, a regulator, so I, I just got another um, 78.4, uh, so that's going to work. Um, so some difficult uh, transistors, some difficult uh, resistors, and some weird old pots. That's about it on this build for hard parts. Um, I really didn't have any problem with anything else. 
So, looking at this build, I am a bit intimidated though. It's just like a simple card like this, but there are a lot of these different resistor values. Um, usually, you, you have, I'm used to having some design, the design like um, uh, reusing some values, but this one has like a crap load. I don't know even how many there are. Something like 40 different values of resistors um, on the board. And it's uh, so I have to be really, really careful when putting everything in. So, as I said before, it's super important that you measure every single resistor that goes in here. Um, just because it's going to be a, on this board, it's going to be a nightmare to track down a, a faulty a resistor. Um, so enough about that. What's we have? I have some. Um, I found some tropical fish for some of the polys. It's going to be. It's going to be fun to use those. Always cool to see in a uh, in a build. Um, also, I've I just like gone through my uh, my stash to find some some oddly colored uh, caps as well, just for fun. So, uh, but otherwise uh, everything is here except. The, the meter that's going to go in here. Um, and the... I'm missing one more part. Yeah, the, the transformer. So, uh, solve the resistors and get that order and uh, I'm done. Also, it wouldn't be any fun if I don't do anything uh, like weird or special. So I'm going to try a thing I never tried before. These are our core transformers. Uh, supposedly these are going to be like the best of uh, the best transformer you can have. So I'm going to, I haven't used these before. They look uh, look really nice and uh, I also like the, the four uh, screw mounting instead of just you know, putting a, a large chunk, a large um, screw through through the transformer. So I'm, this is going to look, look really tidy in the unit. So um, that's about it um, yeah so these are all the different resistors so I'm gonna start to put these in and uh, wait for the ones I'm missing and um, yeah just do as normal four trimmers in there as well no no difficult in sourcing them so. um, well, that's it. I'll see you in a while.